Hey everybody, it's Charla, and today I'm going to be trying out a new deck. This is a white weenie deck, and the other day whenever I opened my core 2021 pack from the rewards of the end of the season, you all seen that I pulled my second Basri kit. So... With that in mind, I decided it was time to up my life gain deck. So now, everything in this deck, um, mana cost wise, three or less. Uh, uh, some of the most powerful cards that are, you know, life gain um, wise, they are obviously either one two, sometimes three. So, I decided that it was time to try to make a white weenie deck. I have built a couple of white weenie decks in the past, um, mostly with a Johnny, just because a Johnny has such powerful abilities, whether it be exile, plus one, plus one counters, vigilance, gain life, etc, etc. Um, so, I decided that it was time to go ahead and make this Basri Ket deck and see what we can do with the strong cards that is in the newer sets. Ikoria, Core 21, uh, things like that. So this deck, I named it Tri-Mythic. So we're going to see how far we can get. I have played with this deck since the end of the season. And it put me in Gold Tier 3 at the start of the new season. Which started two days ago. So... I'm back up to platinum, uh, I don't even remember, platinum, let's see, just to look here, so I don't tell you all wrong, I think it's platinum tier 4, um, yes, platinum tier 4, so, I just feel like this deck is going to make it, um, just because it is such a strong deck and I believe it's going to get us there. So with that being said, I have three Alicids of Life's Bounty. This has the ability to pay one and sacrifice her and we can give protection of a certain color until the end of turn. I have two Fight as One. Um, this lets a human or non-human become indestructible with a plus one plus one counter. I have two God's Willings, quick one drop to give protection from your choice, and it also lets us scry, so let's us scry to be able to see if that next pull is definitely going to be what we're looking for. Four Healer Hawks, because these are such powerful, powerful cards, like for a one drop that has flying and lifelink, I am definitely going to miss these cards when standard rotates out in September because obviously they are from Ravnica Allegiance. Selfless Savior, I have one of these. Let's just sacrifice it and another target creature that we control gains indestructible. Um, Speaker of the Heavens, Vigilance, Lifelink, 1-1, one, one, and we can create a 4-4 four, four if we have at least 7 or more life from our starting life total. Four Johnny's Pride Mates. I'm going to miss these whenever they rotate out as well because they are a War of the Spark. These are one of your life gain train engines right here. Um, they constantly get bigger each time you gain life. Basri Solidarity. I have two of these in here to help put a plus one plus one counter on each creature that we control. Obviously, this is going to you know, benefit us quite a bit um, to help save like our birds um, or pigeons or okay it's a hawk my bad uh feet of resistance let's just put a plus one plus one counter um gain protection so that's a good thing one it being a two drop which is not bad but it also gives us quite a bit of utility with the plus one plus one counter and protection griffin area i have one of these just because it's an enchantment and where there is so much life gain going on it lets us be able to get another creature onto the battlefield if we gain three or more life at the uh, beginning of our end step so if we have Daxos or uh, the orders or anything like that out it's going to help that life gain and with orders being said I have four of these 
because they are pretty much the beginning of the life gain train. I have four Daxos just because he's wonderful to have. Let's us gain life when a creature enters or dies. Um, so that's not bad. Uh, for a little bit of removal, I do have three Vanishing Lights because it's a three drop. That's like the most I have in this deck. Um, I thought about uh, Conclave Tribunals. Yes, you can use the Convoke to let you know the creatures pay for the um, mana cost. But it is kind of hefty, especially if you're needing to get it out. Um, and it works the same way, just a little cheaper. I have one Heliod. I wish that I had more, but unfortunately I don't. Because once he's gone, he's gone. Um, especially if he is exiled. Of course, if he's destroyed or something with the word destroy on it doesn't hinder him. Because he is indestructible. But, you know, we have to, you know, have backup for him just in case that were to happen. Two Basri Kets. Um, as I was mentioning, this is what this whole deck is built around with him. Um, this is an awesome, awesome card. And such a strong card to be a three drop. Um, definitely like this card. Um, I was a little leery about him when he first came out. But I'm really starting to like him. Um, obviously, somebody had to take the place of Gideon Jura. But uh, I feel like he's living up to the ability and the you know, the name, but yeah, uh, I think he's a great card, and he really does well on this deck. I have one Linden. I do wish that I had more of these two, um, but I only have one, but it is okay, because she does what we need her to do, and Lurus. He is not my companion. He's just in there, so if we have, say, a Healer Hawk or um, anything with under the mana cost of two, we can bring it back which is beautiful, especially if we are needing to gain more life. And 21 planes. So I have 60 cards in this deck, so it makes it quick and easy. So um, I'm going to go ahead and try to play and see where we can get. Um, like I said, I've had a few losses with it, and it's mainly just because Yugen's whoever. Um, unfortunately, I have no control over the aggression of Yugen when it comes to these decks. And speaking of Yugen, okay. Um, I guess the ears were burning or horns or whatever you want to say. Alright, so this is a pretty good hand. Um, everything in our hand is mana cost. Oh! Wow. Okay. Well, easy win for us. Thank you, sir. Um, Brian, I do appreciate that. You got me a pip on tier 4. I do appreciate that. Well, like I was saying, that was a good start in hand, but unfortunately, maybe they couldn't come to what they needed. Um, and, it, and it happens. I mean, I've had to give up because you had to maybe take a few mulligans to where your opening hands are just not great. And you don't want to start out the game with two or three cards in your hand. So I've done it before. I've scooped. But just because, you know, it's not fun like that. And, you know, you're trying to build momentum up and it doesn't happen, so... Um, maybe let's check this. And I'm going to just throw this out here. I don't know if it's just me or maybe you all are having problems too on Arena. But the queue time is taking a little bit longer than normal. Um, I'm, I sat in a um, queue the other day waiting for almost two and a half minutes. Waiting on a game to be found. I was kind of quite concerned. So this is a good hand. Um, obviously turn one. Alicid, turn two, Daxos, turn three, a Johnny, um, the prod mate. So then hopefully by, you know, third turn around, we'll be able to gather some more um, mana or maybe some other plays. That way we can have access to the banishing lights if need be. So we're going to go ahead and keep this. And this is M exclamation point D4S. Okay, cool. Um, I'll tell you, some of these usernames. We were having a discussion about that. Um, I played one the other day. It was Fat Booty Hole. Who, who names herself Fat Booty Hole? I, I don't know. I was very concerned. I was very concerned. Plus, I just thought it was really funny. Um, Fat Booty Hole. I don't know. Where these people come up with their names. I don't know. So, they're going to more than likely get rid of our Vanishing Light or the Prop Mate. Ooh, okay. Vanishing Light. I don't blame you there. Oh, speak of the devil, we gained another one, so thank you, sir. 
All right. So we are obviously not going to attack. And the reason I said that is because we want to give them time to kind of get some stuff built up here. Because I need to see what this deck is going to be about. Okay. So maybe a control deck as far as control creatures, maybe? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Interesting. Okay. So, we definitely need to put a stop to this. Because we don't want those rat tokens. So we're going to go ahead and pull this one, considering they've already seen it. They have no mana to do anything. So we're going to go ahead and exile this, just because we don't want that causing us problems. Even though they probably have more than one copy in the deck. But, whatever. Okay, so we're going to swing. We're going to swing for the fences. And whatever they block, we are going to go ahead and sacrifice the Alicid. Give it protection from black. And we're going to go ahead and kill that. Just because we don't need that call. Nobody likes Death Touch. Alright. Alright, so... We're going to go ahead and get rid of that enchantment. Um, in case you didn't know, that said uh, I had flash, and whenever the Johnny's Pride mate died, they get to take control of it, and we don't want that. So. Alright, so what we're going to do here, we're going to still swing with everything. We're going to use this God's Willing up against it. So we're going to go ahead and do this. That way we can scry as well. we going to use the protection from black. We'll take another one. That's fine with me because it's looking like the death touch is becoming repeated throughout their deck. We've got them down to six health in four turns. So that's doing pretty good. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and sacrifice the pride mate. Now we're just gonna sit here <laughs> because unfortunately we needed to get rid of that. I do have another Daxos in my hand in case they just try to destroy it. Alright, so this is a, maybe some sort of life gain deck? I haven't seen, other than the 1-1. One, one. Uh, okay, so we're just going to go ahead and take the damage. Hopefully we can draw something else. Maybe a healer hawk or, okay, cool. Um... Just something that we can start building a little momentum with. Um, <clears throat> that's the only thing I really have to say about this deck. Is you do tend to get more lands than what you can work with. Um, because everything is such a cheap mana cost. Um, let's see. They're probably going to get rid of that God's Willing. Yeah, I figured they would. Just because that's hindering them. Um, and now they're starting to build up a little momentum. I mean, we had them down to 9 life. Now they're at 10, and it's all because of the veto. So, we're going to really have to try to figure out how we're going to do this here. I think what we're going to do is we're going to attack with Daxos. And then whatever he blocks with which would more than likely probably be not of the ebon legion i would imagine just because Vito right now is continuously giving him life while we are losing life um so hopefully we can kill him regardless we'd be able to kill the knight or Vito, whatever he decides to block so we're gonna go ahead and attack just because they've got that death touch tapped right now um and they don't have the mana to pump the knight so we're going to go ahead and use Feet of Resistance on Daxos. Give it protection from black. 
and we're going to go ahead and kill the knight. Now, it would not surprise me if they <clears throat> try to murder my Daxos. Would not surprise me. Because now, with the demonic embrace on the. whatever this is. Hounded. what? Hooded white fang. whatever. Um, it's gonna become hard for us to block because we have nothing with flying right now. So I'm gonna go ahead, he has one card in his hand, but I'm gonna go ahead and attack with Daxos. Just because he's probably not gonna want to lose that veto. And I don't blame him. I wouldn't want to lose veto either because he is helping him gain, you know, the life gain. Um, are you gonna kill my pride mate? Yeah. I figured. Cool. Oh. Okay, cool. So things aren't looking so great right now. Ooh, that'll work. That'll work. Okay, we're gonna bring Loris in. I don't know. Cool. Okay, so we'll bring the Pride Mate in. Have a little more to work with here. Okay. Attack with Daxos. We've still got two more creatures unless they just completely do something. We only have one more turn. Okay, so he's saying good game. Oh, okay, yeah. Good game. That was a pretty good game. I'm not gonna lie, that was a good game. Well, that's why you don't get cocky when you're playing a game. Because you could have the opponent down like we had him the six life. We thought everything was gonna be fine. We were gonna be able to kill him within the next couple of turns. But the game always can turn around. So that's why you never get cocky when you're playing Magic. And that's one thing that I, myself, and also Trav tends to notice. People get cocky on here and they become absolute smart alecks. And it really pisses us off. Um, I mean, it should not be to the point of it pissing you off. Because... You have these people on here that when you're trying to take a turn, um, they're constantly, your go, your go, oops, oops, good game, oops, uh, nice. You know, they're just saying all these random things just to kind of aggravate you or whatever. And they'll be complete buttheads. And it really sucks that people are just petty. And it should not be like that. Like, get on here and just have fun. I mean, I enjoy playing in ranked, yes. Sometimes I get really frustrated because I run into a lot of counter decks and then I just have to take a deep breath, realize, hey, it's just a game, whatever, don't get upset, you know. Just because you lose one doesn't mean you're a loser. So we're going to go ahead and play Speaker of the Heavens. This was a great hand for us, nothing above two mana. We'll draw into something, we have three mana in our hand, so that's great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play the Pride Mate so we can go ahead and start building him up. It does look like they're playing maybe a life game deck. Unless it's like other colors. Um, ooh, red and white. Okay, Boros maybe? Cool. So this actually is good. Leaves us enough if they try to, say, shock us or something we can also use feet of resistance which is two mana so we have two mana open as well as five is one to give two creatures indestructible so this works perfectly so we're gonna go and attack and the beautiful thing about speaker of the heavens is they have vigilance and that is such a powerful card for a one drop i, d I just think it's crazy it's a good card though it really is Okay, so we're getting more lands. <laughs> so we're going to just go ahead and attack. We need to start building life up anyway so we can continue making the... Um, we can go ahead and start building up the momentum to make the 4-4 angels. Because um, we can only do that at the time we play a sorcery. Um, ooh! Okay. Okay. So, Krinko is going to become a problem real fast. So, what we're going to do is we're going to try to bait out a block here. We're going to swing with everything. 
Obviously, they're probably going to block one of the 1-1s one with their 0-3 wall. They're probably going to block the other 1-1 one one with Krenko, thinking that they're going to be able to kill it. Then we're going to use a Feeder Resistance or a Fight as 1. Either way, they do have one red mana open, so that's enough for, like, an Infuriate. Um, so we'll probably use the Indestructible. Oh. Did they read our mind? I believe they did. Okay, cool. So, if Krenko goes to attack this turn, because that's the only way he's going to be able to get bigger. And he's probably going to attack. We will definitely block him. And we use either our fight as one or feet of resistance. That is fine with me. Okay, so we have a 10 Street Dodger. We can afford to take one damage. Um, okay, so here goes the Krenko. We're going to go ahead, resolve it. He made three one ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and block him with the Speaker of the Heavens. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to make him indestructible and put a plus one plus one counter on him. So here's this. Red. Unfortunately we're not able to kill him unless we use our other fight as one. But I don't want to use, well... Actually, let's go ahead and do it. Because we need to get rid of him. We we have to get rid of him. He's going to cause us problems. He's dead. Great! Beautiful. Okay. So, I'm going to keep this land in my hand. We're going to go ahead and pop a Basri Solidarity onto all our creatures. So, this is nice. We're going to go ahead and tap our Speaker of the Heavens to go ahead and make the 4-4 Angel. So now we're going to just attack with the 10-10. Okay. So now this also gives us mana... In case he tries to do something to the Speaker of the Heavens or um, the 4-4. Because that 4-4 will become a problem for him. Okay. So, he's got the Goblin Ringleader. So, I'm assuming this is a Goblin deck? Some sort of Goblin deck? This is like mind-bottling to me. Do you ever just, like, get into one of those games and you're, like, looking at their deck and it's like, what? You know? It's like, what? Okay. He said good game. So, I'm wondering if he's being, like, smart or what's happening. Okay. So, I'm going to attack with a 4-4 and I'm going to attack with a 10-10. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and tap him and go ahead and make another 4-4 four, four Angel, which is great with me. That way we also have the ability to sacrifice the Aelicid if we have to. Because right now, next turn, if nothing happens, notice I said, if nothing happens, he will be dead. Okay. So, okay, he's swinging, he's swinging. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take the damage. No, no, I'm not. Actually, what I want to do is I'm going to block his, he has no mana. I'm going to block his ringleader with my 4-4. Okay, works for me. So now... Looks like we have an open shot here of winning. So I'm going to swing in. That way if he does maybe have something up his sleeve, we're not ruined. But he has no mana, so it looks like we've won this, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! Alright. Well... That was very interesting. That was a very interesting goblin deck. I'm very shocked at that. Um, a lot of goblins. A lot of them. Um, pretty good goblins, too. Um, 
that's another thing. Ever since Jumpstart came out and everybody's been having access to the goblin decks that, you know, they get if they're pulled, uh, a lot of great goblins in there, especially Muxus. Muxus right now is absolutely crazy. Historic, um, yeah, it's almost scary to go play in Historic because he's so strong. Um, there's been talks of banning him. Uh, what do you all think? Um, I do want to ask this question. When you're playing, doesn't matter if it's at home or on Arena, what's your favorite decks to play? Do you like Demir? Do you like Life Game decks? Do you like Gruel? What do you like? Um, I love Life Game decks. That's my favorite. Um, either that or, or Golgari. Those two are my favorite. So, what's your favorite decks? Um, so, that was my Tri-Mythic deck. <laughs> Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it and we will catch you on the next video. Bye.